Yes, sir. Lockout men. In the building. With my DJ, Ryan Wolf, playing us in. That's what's up. That's what's up. I am back. Yes, sir. I am back with another podcast interview for you guys today. Thank you for joining me. I really do appreciate it. Well, this young lady right here comes from YouTube. She has a nice little YouTube page. I pretty much uh, had a subscriber. You know, he sent uh, sent uh, sent the link over to me and said, "Hey, lockout, why don't you uh, why don't you try and get this young lady on your uh, on your podcast?" I was like, "Huh, maybe I would I would do that." So I sent out a request and. A couple of back and forth, back and forth, but now she is here. She is here. Yeah. I, unfortunately, I don't have too much of a background for her. I think I asked you to send the background, but but from what I gathered from your YouTube, you you were in the military. You have drove. Yeah. You have drove for JB Hunt, and. Mm-hmm. You are a parent. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, let me uh, okay. let me go ahead and bring to the show, Miss Kenya, <laughs> the Road Wanderer. How you hey. doing today? How you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good, man. Pretty good. I got a. Uh, I got a low right quick, but of course, you know, I'm I, I gotta I gotta stay consistent with my uh mm-hmm. with my appointments and all like that. Before I used okay. to just before I used to just like call people on the day and like, yo, you ready to do this and yada yada yada. But I'm getting I'm getting a lot of people that's 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 requesting to come on to the show. So now I have to actually do like appointments now schedule. i had to do a schedule well, that's good. i had to do a schedule so i guess that's a good thing right that's a great thing oh i well, thank you thank you thank you all right so Ke- busy. i know right so <laughs> <laughs> so kenya man where where are you from where where are you from i'm originally from alabama i was raised in georgia so i i say i'm from georgia um and I've been there basically my whole life until I left for the military. So, all right, all right. Atlanta is home. All right. So, at, you started in out. You you was born in Alabama, right? Born in Alabama, raised in in Georgia. So Georgia's home for me. Oh, okay, okay. So, how was it? How was it growing up in Georgia then? Um, norm. I don't <laughs> normal. Georgia isn't bad. It's a lot of opportunities in Georgia. You know, a so, lot of a lot uh, of people say that. A lot of people say that. Yeah. Is it's it? There's a lot of opportunities in Georgia, and it's a lot of uh, black-owned businesses, kind of like DC, where uh, the black is is popular. We have a lot of black businesses in Georgia, so a lot of people go there to get a head start or start their business or. So it's a lot of us there for sure. So for so in your opinion, for for people or for, you know, for uh, black owned minorities, uh, if they want to start a start a business, they'll be a little bit more successful, down, be a little bit more successful down in Georgia. Yes, definitely. Okay, 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 okay. That's good to know. If you guys want to start that business and y'all want to get it up, you, hey, listen to her. Georgia's that place, man. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, about Georgia. What, what what do you like about it? I mean, what do you what do you like about it? Um, I think for Georgia, I would say the weather, but it's it's hot and humid. It's, I guess it's the people. I guess it's the down, you know, the southern hospitality. You always get that in Georgia. Um, I've lived a lot of places, being that I was in the army. I moved a lot of places, and it's nothing really like Georgia. Like 
in Georgia, you have so many varieties, just food, culture, whatever, um, businesses, places you can go. It's tons of stuff to do. It, it's a lot to do in, in Georgia, just Atlanta, period. It's like a, they say it's like, um, like the next Hollywood, like black Hollywood, but there's every industry in Atlanta you could find like um film, culinary, trucking, anything that you could think of. Atlanta's like the place um that you could go to find it. Okay, okay. So I'm I'm looking over here. What was the reason why you moved to Texas? To where Texas? It says it says on your thing that we moved Dallas, Texas. So Oh yeah. So, so I moved to Texas because of course I have been in Georgia my whole life. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to try something different. I've lived a few places, but I um Texas was always on the list. And so every few years I move to like somewhere different. Just to try it out, see if I like it. Oh. And so Texas was next on the list. Um, me and my best friend had actually talked about it, and it was either between Florida or Texas. And so Texas had more um, opportunities and job-wise, so we, we chose Texas. Okay, okay. But now but now you're back in Georgia. Well, I'm in Alabama right now. Oh, you're back. Oh, oh, okay. It family uh-huh. oh, okay so you back so you're 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 back in alabama yeah right now just just to visit family oh okay. during this whole this whole pandemic, pandemic is thing. all right so after right. after the pandemic where where to next i'm going back to texas are <laughs> uh, you going back so but what about georgia you know georgia I don't want to live in Georgia. Georgia. I don't want to live in Georgia no more. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there my whole life. So it's like, you know, you get, some people get tired of it. I'm the type of person, like my name on YouTube, I'm a wanderer. I like to travel and visit different places. So oh. I've been in Georgia my whole life. I'm not doubt that I, I honestly moved back here. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So what was, uh, what was you was doing before you got into trucking? Um... So I had got out of the military in 2016. Um, 2016, no, 2017, I had went to Iraq to become a contractor. And when that didn't work, I came back. And How do that? Let, 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 little- let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Sorry to cut you off. But let me uh-huh. ask you this. You you say you was in the military, right? How how long you was in? Yeah. The, how uh-huh. How long you was in the military for? I did four years and eleven months. Oh, so you actually did the you did the four you you pretty much four and out, right? Mm-hmm. I did my four, and I was I had re well, I was reenlisting to do another four, mm-hmm. but I decided to go, cut it short. Okay, so I got out after my four years. Okay, so you say now you went back as a contractor. I I heard of mm-hmm. I, I heard of uh I heard of people say that. What is a contractor for the military is about? Was you a contractor for the military so you, or? Mm-mm. You could be a military contractor, which means that you basically, um, you do kind of like the same job as the military, but you're a civilian and you be make, you're you making more money doing it. Okay. Or you could be, a, which is a, like a civilian contractor and you work for a company, but you work in an, in another country and that um is where you either you're feeding the soldiers because i was a cook in the military mm-hmm. and when i got out i was a, a chef for a company working in afghanistan okay. but as a civilian contractor you're making way more money than you did in the military okay. and um what else you you work for a company basically and it's tax-free so you can make really good money as a contractor, especially if you're a veteran. They like to hire veterans. So okay. anybody out there that's looking, they should be hiring. They're always how, hiring. How would a person get in? I mean, how would a person get in a contract gig like that? Um, some 
some of them have uh, career fairs online, like virtual career fairs, mm-hmm. um, where or hiring events online. Some people you can just go to the actual. I guess you have to type up um, contractors overseas. Um, maybe USA Jobs. Um, and it's another website, but I really can't remember it right now. But basically online, um, just fill it out and a recruiter will get back to you. Okay. Okay. After you submit your resume. So So being that you like a civilian contractor, are, are you still protected by the, by the military while you, while you guys out there serving the military? Yes. So you're going to be on a base. A military base so you're still protected um by the military per se okay okay so mm-hmm. during your time in the military what, what what was your what was your title and what have you seen uh during your time in the military well when i was in i was a cook i was a food i was a food service specialist that's what they call it mm-hmm. um i didn't really like it actually I mean, I learned a lot, but I didn't like it. I needed that military structure, um, so that's why I joined. But we basically just, uh, every day, you work out, you go do your job, and then you go home. That's the basic. Um, but it's a lot of opportunities that you, you know, you can get free schooling, you get free health care, um, you know they help out with a lot. So, well, you pretty much got health care. Um, you pretty much got health care for life, considering the fact that you you was yes. you you are a military veteran. You're right. Yep. Okay. So I'm good. Oh, I'm good on that. That's a blessing. Uh, that that you got that for your kid as well, right? Uh, it just depends. Some if you want it for your kid, some people have to pay. If you have a certain percent of disability, you get it for free. Oh, okay, okay. Um, for your kids. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. All right, so... Uh, they'll it, look out for you in some aspects. I'm, I, I want to go back because, you know, you said you was a chef. So, you went to... Bo- <laughs> slap mm-hmm. slap me if I'm wrong, but you went to boot camp to become a chef? To learn how to cook, yes. To learn how to cook? <laughs> You well, you went through all another, you went through all another. of that to, you went to all of that a sergeant hollering in your face getting up at wee hours Crazy. in the morning doing y- doing doing the doing the catastatics and everything like literally like you're <laughs> like you're gonna go into war or something like that but then they they gave you you're just cooking they 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 put you as a cook yeah. Well, I chose that job. I didn't know any better. I didn't know any better. Um, you get to choose. You get to choose your job. Okay. And um, so you go through basic training, like you said. Right. Boot camp. Right. It's the hard part. Right. And then you go for eight more weeks to, or whatever, however many weeks for your job. Your job training after basic training or boot camp. Okay. Yeah, and I did all that to be a cook. To be horrible. A cook. Well, I mean, hey, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, the, lot, I, I mean, the, I, I mean, I, I mean, uh, the soldiers got to eat too. I mean, they do have to eat. They, so they the cooks are very important. They got, they got to eat too. So, is, but I, I job is, is, I'm just saying, you, you went through all of that. <laughs> learn how to shoot. Learn how to shoot. Learn explosives. Yep. Learn explosives and yep. stuff like that to come back and be a cook. To be cooking. Yeah. To be yeah. cooking. God I, damn it. As man. soon as I literally, as soon as I, I know, as soon as I got sent to my first duty station, I got deployed to Afghanistan. Okay. Okay. At the time of, yeah. Now, so, now, please tell me you didn't. Go, now, please tell me you didn't go to Afghanistan to cook. Did you? I was a cook in Afghanistan. You, yes, I was. Oh, okay. So, in other words, you, yeah. in other words, you didn't see any action. I did not see any action. No, thank God. Did you? Oh, okay, you said thank God. So, 
you, did you want to see any action? I didn't want to. Who knew? <laughs> I mean, at one point in time, I did. Uh huh. But I had other soldiers telling me, like, no, like, just just chill out, just do your job as a cook. It's not something that you will really want to see oh, because okay. it traumatizes you. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, yeah. so you you did four and some change. Uh, what? Did right. did they have any issues with you when you wanted to get uh when when you wanted to riff I mean wolf draw out or did they get mad did they did they penalize you or anything like that No, they didn't. Um, but they were just questioning like, "Are you sure this is what you want to do? You know, you don't have a plan too much. You know, you have a child. Just make sure that this is exactly what you want to do." And I really didn't have a plan. I just know, well, I had a small plan, but I didn't have everything planned out to see. I just knew it was just time for me to move on to something else. So you, you, you got, you got pregnant while you was in the service or you was, or you already had a baby prior. Oh, you got pregnant in the service. Yes. So one of the, so one of the servicemen is, is the baby's father. Are y'all, are y'all still together? No, we're not. Uh, how old's the? We're not. We co-parent and we're still good, but oh, okay. How's we're not together? How's the baby? My son is now seven. Oh, okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, congratulations for being uh you. for being the moms and everything. Uh, Thank you. Thank uh, you. How now? Now I heard. And I only seen, but now that I got an actual person that that actually got pregnant and that was in the service, how did that mm-hmm. how did that affect the service? Because I I thought that you know uh, people in the service, uh, the the military have an issue with uh, with with uh, male female relationships. I mean, you can. You can, um, once you get out of basic training and boot camp and all that stuff, you can do whatever you want to do as far as relationships. Oh, okay. Um, uh huh. But being a single parent or being in the service with, with a child is, is not easy at all. Um, like his, it, I don't know. And I, I think that's the reason why I got out because I felt like it wasn't really, the army wasn't really family oriented, mm-hmm. you know. They they help out, but they don't help out to the full extent. The army comes first, and family comes second. Mm-hmm. In which that's probably, that's what you signed up for. Did the army? So, so um, they the 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 military did knew of you of you guys that that had a baby together. So they they didn't want to uh-huh. they they didn't want to work with you guys to keep y'all together as a unit. I mean, we stayed together um, in the, we were in the same place, mm-hmm. but if you're not married, there, it's not much that they can really help you do. Oh, okay. So it's like they can, they can uh-huh. deploy you to like different states and y'all, y'all really don't have no say. If you're so. married, not if you're, y'all can stay together, but, but if, if you're, you're not boyfriend and girlfriend, right? <laughs> they, they like, we ain't saying that. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know? Uh-huh. All right, so uh, so so, that's it. so from the military, you 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 came out. What what made you what what made you to go and get your uh, CDLs, and where did you go and get it? Um, so from the military, I got out, and once you get out, it's like back to the real world, back to reality, and it was it was difficult. It was difficult getting out the military and having everything right there. At, your, at arm's reach and having help or having, you know, um, you like when you're in the military, it's kind of like you're in your own world still. Mm-hmm. So when you get out, it's like back, you have to, it's like a shock. Mm-hmm. So after I got out, I was just trying to figure it out, figure out what I wanted to do. Um, I moved a few places. Like I lived in California, I moved to Savannah, Georgia. So when everything wasn't working out, um, then I was actually going to get back into the service. But this time I was going to join the Navy. Mm-hmm. And I had went through, I went through all the 
paperwork. I had signed a contract and, you know, everything. Um, and then one day my dad sent me a picture of his, um, he's the owner of Ops. Mm-hmm. And he was just doing box trucks. So he sent me a picture of one of his checks. And it was a nice, it was a nice check. So he was like, you should go ahead and get your CDL. You could be making this money. And I reconsidered. I'm like, maybe I will. I'm like, I can use my GI Bill, go to school for free, and I can get my CDL. So that's what I did. Okay. Um, I went to Georgia Driving Academy mm-hmm. in Conyers, Georgia. Mm-hmm. And in three weeks, because they're really good, in three weeks I got my CDLs. Okay, okay. So you got your uh, CDLs from a uh, from a school now. Considering the fact that your father sent you a paycheck and and pretty much said uh-huh. and pretty much said, "Yo, this is what I am making, and you could probably right. make the same thing." What was the culture shock uh-huh. that you at that actually happened when you got into trucking to see that it would take a minute to get where yeah, where he was is. at. And plus, he was on their op. Um, right. I had done research and I had saw videos of people saying, and I had knew a few truck drivers as well saying, you know, your first six months to a year, you're really not going to be making that much money. Exactly. So I had already known that. I had already known that. And um, so I wasn't looking forward to making $2,300 paychecks every week or every two weeks. I, I was uh reality mm-hmm. i was being real with myself and at that point in time i wasn't really working so anything any paycheck that i was getting was was helping me so um it was a shock but it wasn't too much of a shock i knew i had to wait to get at least to my six month mark at least start making a little bit more money because them first paychecks you'd be looking at them like what is this all right so JB Hunt yeah. uh from your from your page looked like JB Hunt is the only is the only trucking company that you drove for. So what was your what was your experience with uh JB Hunt and JB Hunt A ATL? I drove for JB Hunt. I also drove for FedEx as well. Um, oh, okay. I did uh yeah. I did over the road with uh FedEx. Okay. So FedEx had over the world. How, how did you behind. wait? How did you wait? Wait, wait, wait. Did you <laughs> wait? How how long? How long you was driving? Did wait? Did you start with FedEx first? Or I started with Fe- no. I started with JB Hunt, and after my after, six month mark, I went to FedEx. Wait, FedEx FedEx took you in after six months. Yeah, uh, it was a FedEx contractor. Oh, it was and con- after six months. They they take it. Uh-huh. Okay, so you so actually you you work you you drove for a person that had a contract with FedEx and you pulled FedEx with freight. With FedEx. Uh-huh. Oh, okay, yes. okay. So, th- in other words, you 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 drove for owner operator. Yes, another company. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So with uh, so with JB Hunt, you was over the road. And you was only with JB Hunt for what six months? Six months with JB Hunt, I was actually local. Oh. I was doing local intermodal. Okay, pulling the um, trailers out the rail yard. Uh huh. Okay. What was your What was your experience with that? JB Hunt was cool. They got me my first experience. Um, they started me out with a trainer, How? Jeff at JB Hunt Lithia Springs. He's really good. How was the training process? It wasn't bad at all. Every day you had to ride with a trainer. Oh, you um, had to ride with a different person, or was it the same trainer? No, it was the same person every day. Oh, it was okay. The same person every day. I had a, I had got a train, a different trainer. You know, if if some other people came in and needed training, um, I had switched trainers. Okay. But after I switched trainers, I had a trainer, a different trainer, maybe for one day, and he was like, "Can you honestly think you're ready to?" be out by yourself i don't think you need to be in training anymore <laughs> um, it was that bad so that was after a month <laughs> it was i think i was doing pretty good at first you know you grinding the gears and you're you need help on backing but well i did um but after a month 
I think I was, I think I was good. I was started by myself and I had got more comfortable. But with Jamie Hunt, the morale is really good. I like it. Um, the people that you work with and work for were really nice. They helped you out any type of way, like any way possible, you know? Okay. Um, they always look out for you. And they also, in one of my videos, I said that they had sent me to, they send the drivers to California every year mm -hmm. um, to help out with uh, J.B. Hunt in Los Angeles. And out there, you make double the pay. You make way more money. Okay. Um, so out there, I was making really good money every week. All right, so you uh, so you was so you was local, so you was slip seeding in a uh, in a day cab, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yes. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So uh, so J B Hunt, six months, huh? Um, mm -hmm. you you from there you went to uh, you went to FedEx. Are you are you still mm -hmm. are you still with FedEx? Or are no, you still right with the not. are you still with the company with I mean that 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 pulls FedEx freight? No, I'm not. How did you manage to How did you manage to find a company that that was that was pulling FedEx freight? Um, I, uh, Indeed. Oh, okay. They're all over Indeed, especially in Atlanta. Okay, okay, okay. How long How long was it when you was with before you stopped driving for them? I drove for them for six months too. Oh, okay, okay. And they were a really, they were a really good company. Okay, so you, would you? And I was team driving then in a um, sleeper. All right. So how was it? How, how was it team driving? Was it was it with a female or a male? Ooh. Well, uh, at first, let me think. I think at first I had a guy. Um, that I, w I was training with and <laughs> that was okay the first time um it just bothers me if one person smokes and another person smokes especially me i can't do with cigarette smoke mm -hmm. i'm like i can't do this mm -hmm. um so then they gave me a female okay the female smoked too so i was like okay <laughs> maybe i'm just gonna have to deal with it but it was just worrisome me and the female really didn't get along too well so i mean at the towards the end we got along better but i rather ride with males because they don't cause as much trouble as females like females are very um i was in the military so i know how the stuff goes like you know just hunkering down and doing your job and going home but females they complain a lot and they all whiny and I, so I always tell myself, if I ever did team again, it would have to be with a male. And um, because they come, they do their job, and then, you know, they're ready to go home. You know, I There's asked. Not, no extra debating. I asked the, I asked the question. <laughs> I, 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 got, I asked that question. That's going to be my next uh, podcast topic. Who would you rather, who, who would you rather team with, uh, male or female and why? So you say you rather, t you rather train or not train, but you rather team with a male. I'd rather team with the male. I had two males. Mm -hmm. One was an older black guy. Loved him. He was like an uncle. Uh, mm -hmm. he trained me for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, um, then I had, I rode with another guy, uh, a white guy that was younger, my age. Mm -hmm. And every both of them were just really cool. They're laid back. They do their job. They know the job. If I need help, they're there, you know. And I really don't ask for too much um, help. They don't ask, you know, nothing extra. But with females, it's just like I only roll with one. And I'm like, I would never, I don't think I would want to be with a female. It just seems like males are more, um, just get the job done and, okay. you know. Okay. It's nothing extra. It's no 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 whining and complaining and I don't know. So you say you rather, maybe it was just her. So you say you rather I rock was, out with a with a male and get in, get the job done, and everything. I'm not a fan of team. I, I'm not a fan of teaming though. But if I was to ever t ever team with anybody, I'm I, me personally. I probably have to go with a female 
because I, I don't think uh-huh. I can I don't think I can get along with hard legs. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm more yeah, male. You know, I'm more <laughs> I'm more of a soft leg kind of guy. <laughs> you know, I'd rather yeah. I'd rather I'd rather see soft legs nets uh sitting in the passenger seat with me and female yeah. and females just smell good. That's all. I'm I'm no 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 shot no shots fired no shots fired it's just that it's just that uh i'm good with with soft legs over there you know what i'm saying like yeah when i'm over here driving and i just have to look in the passenger seat like yeah you're looking good over there but i gotta but don't worry about it though i'm not gonna come after you we all about this money so you know i'm not i'm not right. i'm not gonna try and uh try and get in your getting your junk or nothing like that because you know but yeah as long as you're not a creep mm-hmm. don't be a creep and mm-hmm. perverted then we're gonna be good other than that the only con to guys is they they're not as clean as females mm-hmm. but as far as cleaning up after themselves and food and trash and junk and exactly. bottles exactly exactly but other than that they're fine. <laughs> you say it's just fine. All right. So since so a year altogether, are you uh let me see. Are are you still driving? I'm not driving right now. Um actually I took time off to finish my massage school. Mm-hmm. I was in massage school before and uh I didn't finish. So I told myself um that I would finish that first and then my dad still wants me to drive for him. Okay. For his company sometimes as well. So oh. I just work with my dad. Okay. So be so at the time being a female trucker, how you know, I how was it for you being a female trucker out here? I loved it. Um I always met new people and I'm a person. So I was always meeting people and people, you know, they couldn't believe that, oh, you're, you're a female and you don't look like a male and you're driving. Like, I guess a feminine female, they said a lot of the females kind of start to look like men after a while. <laughs> you, say, you say, you say after a while, huh? We start, they started to look like men. I guess. Ooh, I, I gotta, I, I don't know. I mean, there's some... There's some there's some fine looking females out here, especially the ones I talked to so right. far. There's there's some fine looking ones out there. I mean, there's some rough looking ones out there too. Right. But I've seen a few. But there's some fine looking females out here. I did, and you know. I I love it. I love it when I see females driving. Uh, but they were just surprised that I was driving it, and even more surprised that I knew how to drive a manual truck. So okay, but I I love the album. I was always meeting people. Like I have met like lifelong friends from becoming a a truck driver. Okay, so do you think so for for black females um, that's coming into this uh, industry? Do you think they do you think they would would uh, would face any type of challenges coming out here? And if so. Um, how how and if so in your opinion how to how to face those challenges as a black female particularly i i wouldn't say i faced any challenges i mean the only challenge was believing that i could do it Mm -hmm. um so that was something within myself but other than that like i feel like the industry is up for grabs you can do anything um, doesn't matter what your race is, but I ha- I didn't face any discrimination. I didn't face racism. I I just felt like um, people were very inviting. I mean, I mean they might look at you like, you know, can you do this job? Can you complete this task? Am I gonna be able to depend on her? But other than that. Um, I don't, I don't think they would face any mm, challenges like that. Um, I don't think so. I think it's, I think the industry is up for grabs, and I think people can go as far 
as they want to in the industry. Owner op, I don't feel like um, nothing should come in the way okay. of of that. So being a how how hard was it being a parent, uh, being away from your son while you while you was driving? Um, it was a little hard, but I had support. Like I had my support system, like my mom, um, with him. So I was okay. And plus being in the military, I had kind of already gotten used to kind of being away. Mm -hmm. Not for too long, but being away and having to have my mom or like his dad or his grandparents, you know, having to watch him. Um, but I knew that I was sacrificing for a reason mm-hmm. and I just wasn't out here you know doing anything but I was doing it for a reason so as long as my mom knew that and other people knew that they didn't have a problem watching him Okay. and so I had help and I had support so th- that was a blessing because I know a lot of people they don't have that support mm-hmm. and so it's harder when you don't have someone that you can depend on to watch your child or your kids because it, the jobs are demanding, especially local jobs and over the road, it's even more demanding if you can't bring them along with you. So that's something that they would just have to figure out. Um, what did, did, was you, even, was you able to bring your kid? Did, did, did you ever take your kid out with you one, one, one time? I never took him with me, but, um, I know my dad takes my son. He took him on a, like a local run or short run, short hauls. But other, I never took him with me. Um, but I see women because I'm on a Facebook group, uh, black women truck drivers on Facebook, and sometimes they have their kids with them. So I'm guessing that you could do it, but that's not something that I have done yet or thought about doing okay do other than your other than your father your your father pretty much gave you the inspiration to uh to jump into the trucking was there anybody else that uh that inspired you to get into trucking no <laughs> just, not really. just your father um after he gave me the information i i was you know looking on youtube and it was a few truck female truck drivers on there um that were you know motivating like if they did it then you could do it basically but other than my dad i really didn't know of um anybody else that was really doing it like that okay that was driving so he was yeah he was the motivating force okay okay so what other what other facebook groups you you're you're you you're in other than what is it, black women trucking? I mean, black women black truck. Women truck. Truck. So is yes, that's an all fem- that's an all female trucking group, just like she trucking. All female, mm-hmm. all females, and I never heard of she trucking, so I'm about to check. Oh no, out. you got to get with she trucking, Sheree Moore. Oh yeah, let okay. and make sure you let her know that. She le- yeah, she trucking. Definitely check her out, man, okay. because she has she has one of the largest. Uh, she has one of the largest Facebook. Uh, Facebook trucking groups for women throughout the whole Facebook thing, man. Really? I mean, I see that you guys, I see that you guys, I, like I see that you guys got three point three point uh two thousand members. But um, uh-huh. let me uh, let me type let me type in she, and I'll let you know uh, trucking. Uh, let's see, she trucking. The sisterhood right here, she has eight thousand. Okay. Yeah, so she got eight thousand. So definitely, definitely check her out. You know what I'm saying? Definitely check her out, man. She trucking. Sheree Moore. She's a she's an awesome, uh, awesome female. She had she was on the podcast too. So definitely, uh, definitely look her up. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to check her out. And you're right. Yeah. I'm going to check her and out. And then girl. uh and then uh the other one, let's see, the black female or black women truck drivers. So yeah, you guys uh check that out as well. Um 
what do you think what what do you think of these because you know when i when i was looking for trucking groups when i got into in into this like five years ago um it was a lot of it was a lot of black truck drivers black truck drivers only black 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 and then you have right. you have the <laughs> You have the other, you know, you have the other side that looks at us, you know, that's that have our Facebook pages. That's that's for us. They feel some kind of way. Like, what if what if they would come? I don't understand. Right. Like, it's Why? like, what if they come on and say white truck driver? I mean, truck driver, white truck drivers and white only and white, white, white this. You know, they they feel some kind of way. What do you say? What do you, what do you? That's they business. What do you say? <laughs> what do you say to them for them feeling that way? They can feel however they want to feel. That's their business. But we have to have a platform where we can be. Um, we have to have our own platform. They they have everything else. You know, they have stuff handed to them in the world basically handed to them and give it to them but i feel like we can have something for ourselves that uplifts that you know um spreads the word about certain things or it they shouldn't feel any type of way um that's if they want to have a white only that's their business and it's our business that we want to have a black only like people should <laughs> stay in their lane basically mind their business but um i i think it's okay for us to have a, a black only group if, if that's what we want to do because we don't have many um platforms or pages or people you know giving us information so if we want to have a group that spreads information within our community then let us do that because okay. we don't we don't have the the privilege of you know, having information. Well, we do have that privilege, but um, I feel like it's it's fine. People should get out their feelings about certain stuff. Okay, that's what's up. All right, so uh, there's a few groups out there for you guys if you are interested. We got a uh, black women truck drivers right here, black truck drivers only, female truck drivers Inc., mm -hmm. female truck drivers. Uh, so yeah, you know, we got, uh, we got a few female truck drivers. Yeah. We got, a, we got a few out there. All right. All right. So, and that's on Facebook. Yeah. That's on Facebook. Yep. Yep. I just, uh, brought it up. All right. King. Yeah. So all together, you're, you're, you're pretty much done with trucking. Um, um. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, you know, that's, you know, it says, you know, I mean, it says, uh -huh. you know, it's you, 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 you pretty much done with trucking, but are you, uh, done per se? Um, I think I'm done with trucking. I still have my CDL and, you know, if the window comes back open, because I know that, um, I know I'll be working with my dad at times hauling loads so i don't think i'll be completely finished but i do have the option to do other things if i want to i don't trucking is not my only source i have different trades i made sure when i got the military i got different trades as well so i don't have to depend completely on trucking so i don't think i'll be done with it completely but uh it will still be on my radar okay okay that's what's up that's what's up all right so your um you know for what's uh for us to get up out of here you know i do uh appreciate you coming on so thank you very much and thank you you're very welcome you're very thank welcome you you're very welcome um is there any advice for for you know, new female drivers that's that's coming into the industry, is there any advice that you uh, that you have for them? Uh, any advice? So I would say, first of all, believe in yourself. Um, it's not as hard as it looks, and 
if other women could do it before you, then you could do it too. It kind of pays away. Um, also, I would say do your research. See which companies best um, fits you because at the end of the day, um, they're looking for you to work for them. So you have options. It's tons of options in the trucking industry. Just make sure you do your research and see which company um, would best suit you and that will best fit for your lifestyle and your life. And that is it. All right. So before we get up out of here, Miss Kenya, do you have any social media uh, that you would like to that would you like to promote right quick? Um, well, on Instagram, my Instagram name is I love underscore right with three E's. And then on YouTube is um, Road Wanderer. All right. And that's it. All right. So if you guys want to go and check her out, it's the Road Wanderer on YouTube. And I love Reese with three E's on Instagram. Make sure you guys go follow her. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So thank you very much for coming on. Uh, if thank you. You're welcome. If you guys want to come on and chop it up with me, you know how to do it. Just get at me in the Gmail, lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com. Yes, sir. Or you can hit me up in the DM over at Instagram, or you can text me. 216-600-2090. And if you guys want to come on, set an appointment with me and we'll get in and we'll chop it up. You know what I'm saying? I want to thank my special guest today, Miss Kenya, the road wanderer for coming on. Thank you very much. Once again, that's another round of applause for you. Um, if you guys like this con this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more content like this. Yes, sir. I am your humble host, Lockout Men, and my cousin will begin to play us out. Who, who, who is that DJ? Yes, sir. Like that? that is DJ Ryan Wolf. I love that. I love that with that DJ. I love it. If you guys want to, uh, if you got, I, I want to uh, get my thoughts together now. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And again, thanks to my, uh, thanks to my guests for coming on. I really do appreciate it. You guys take it easy and I will come back at you with another video. Y'all take it easy. Peace.